The boat moved farther and farther away from the shore until all that was visible was a tiny speck on the horizon. Teku had never been off the island before, but he knew that long ago his ancestors had come from across the sea. They told stories about the great exodus when his people were on the verge of disappearing. The incessant conflicts between tribes had nearly wiped out the ancient villages turning their inhabitants into nomads who wandered through the forests and jungles in search of new places to settle. Teku looked up at the starry sky. He had always liked doing that. Then he remembered what his master had taught him on one of his first nights in the village temple. Remember, Teku, the importance of light in this world of darkness. Before creation, the gods were surrounded by darkness in an endless night. When the new world emerged, they gave the stars light that with their glow turned the demons into rocks and huge mountains. It was from the light of the gods that life emerged. That's why the role you have been assigned is so important. When you were born, the stars showed that your destiny was to be a light guide. You have the ability to carry an inextinguishable flame with you. And that's why you must remain at my side. As a shaman, I am a messenger. I was born with the power to communicate with the gods, to ask them to help our people and guide them. And the nexus that joins us to them is the light. Fire. Do you understand now how important this tiny flame is? But be calm. You have nothing to worry about. Your preparation is just beginning. A sudden clap of thunder brought his attention back to the small boat. The waters were starting to get choppy. A thunderstorm was rolling in. Luckily, from the boat, the sailors could now make out the opposite shore. Teku would never have been able to imagine what he was going to find in this unknown place.
Deku found a small monkey playing inside the tree. It had probably climbed inside to get out of the rain. Teku decided not to bother it. By the light of the flash, the strange insect turned to Teku. The poor mother monkey had lost her baby. Maybe Teku could help her find it. <laughs> Thank you. 
On that part of the ground, the earth was very damp and disturbed. It would be easy to dig there with the right tools. What the pinyin? Nee, better than mine. It's too big, Kati Yuyo. The young explorer traveled all over the world in search of the most unique mushrooms. To get her to help him, Teka would have to find a mushroom with pink spots. Teko could see a sort of basket floating in the well. This was the baby that had been lost by the mother monkey. But to be able to take it to its mother, Teku needed something to transport it safely. Deeply grateful, the mother monkey offered to help Teku climb up to the treetops.
They waited until the rainwater soaked the strange seed. Suddenly, the ground started to vibrate. Amazing! The gigantic plant was protecting the candle from the rain. like it would start up the strange artifact was broken. Teku would have to find a way to repair it. The strange character had no doubt lost his mind. Something in that cave had horrified him. The only thing Teku understood was that the man had been painting on the enormous wall behind him for a long time. Finally found him. Hey! Okay, what the, what the, what the? I 
raptures carried him inside that cave. Tekka would have to find a way of getting the gigantic stone door open again. Tekku studied the shape of those branches. Suddenly, he had an idea. With the right objects, he could put together a substitute for his friend. When the pot started to boil, the little vegetable changed color, turning red. Teku already had one of the ingredients he needed for the ritual. Without asking for anything in return, that troubled man had ground up the pearl in his mortar. appeared to be udders that were growing out of the tree. A bit disgusting. If there's no other choice... Thank you. 
Teku studied that piece of bark more intently. It was the same shape as his captured friend's mask. That gave him an idea. Maybe that blacksmith could help him repair the lever. Ataque mucho, Luca. Poco chorro. Mincho, mincho. Pasto te chepa, tata. Chingu palo que amigo, chalupa garanca, sale peto coque. Patata borruño, chalpica coco, sana chamanda. In exchange for the repair, Teku would have to relight his furnace.
the blacksmith bid farewell to Teku with gratitude. His forge was back in operation. inserted his candle into the old artifact, a beam of light was projected on the great mural. There it was, a hidden painting. the painting fully. At the center of the mural, there was an enormous monster letting out a terrifying laugh. Under its feet, people were doing all types of tasks. He understood then that this terrible vision was what had driven that man crazy. But what was that creature? 
And why did the tribe seem to worship it? Ina Tango, Bees, Bees, Luga. Chihuahua, Vila Colcha. <laughs> As soon as he took his first steps in the tunnel, the gigantic stone door closed behind him. The light from the candle bounced down the narrow stone passageway 
while he searched for some clue that would lead him to the shaman. When he pointed his tenuous light at the ground, Teku thought he could make out the footprints of Yaka and his captors. He was slowly bending down to study them, when suddenly he noticed that several dark forms were emerging from between the rocks. It was a trap. When he stood up, Teku received a sharp blow to the head, and he saw no more. Teku, open your eyes. Come on, wake up. Teku sat up slowly. He felt as if his head was about to explode. Up here, by the light of the gods. I didn't think you survived the attack on the village. How did you manage to get here? I was starting to think all was lost. Despite being locked in those cages, Master and Apprentice couldn't hide their joy at finding one another. Teku told the shaman how some people had managed to survive the fire. He spoke of his adventure in the marshes, of how the monkeys had carried him in flight through the trees. Yaka was astonished by what his apprentice was telling him. They talked about this for a long time. Then Teku asked about the strange creature they all worshipped in the painting on the wall of the cavern. His master's expression suddenly turned serious. As if it were something he would have preferred never to have to speak about. It all started long before your birth. As you know, our ancestors were born after the fourth destruction of the world. Since then we've populated the earth and tried to honor the gods, whose wrath could bring on another cataclysm. Living in harmony and respecting this world should be our very nature, no? But there is something inside us. A dark corner inherited from the primeval night that makes us place greed and power before all the good we might create. The confrontations between tribes started up again. And fire, once a symbol of wisdom and a sacred gift from the creators, began to be used for destruction. We seem doomed to repeat our fate. But this time we weren't alone. After the first eons, a creature of great power rose up in the mountains. A gigantic being with the face of a bird. Full of wisdom and light, it showed us how to rebuild the cities and recall the teachings the ancients had forgotten. The tribes called him Tezka. It's the same creature you saw in that painting. But the monster Teku had seen in the painting was terrifying. More like a tyrant than a wise leader. His deep, almond-shaped eyes reflected insanity. Seeing his apprentice so confused, Yaka continued with his story. For a time, under the teachings of Tezka, the ancients were able to prosper. Until, little by little, they started to worship him as a god. Then some of them started to perform sacrifices in his honor to gain his favor and attention. 
In this new situation, the tribes became divided. Some started to capture prisoners from other villages to offer up in sacrifice to Tezka. Others abandoned their homes in search of some place far from all that madness. Our ancestors even dared to cross the sea. But that night, we met up with our past again. There was something in that story Teku couldn't understand. As he was telling it, the shaman vacillated as if he were hiding something. Why would a creature as wise and good as the one Yaka was describing allow itself to be seduced by terrible sacrifices? Nevertheless, before he could ask, the conversation was cut short. Hanging from the belt of the warrior, Teku could see a bunch of keys. These could be the keys to the cells. Now, he had to put his mind to getting them and escaping. seemed to fit perfectly onto the stone figure. The ancient sacred mount, the Daiwus, was before him. Mounted on the ancestral beast, he could catch up with his enemies and rescue Yaka. But there was no time to lose.
Yeah. <laughs> 